Methodist coup in Tutmo, Connecticut. We haven't, like, it's been off the air for years now. It's getting bigger. He's not Where the hell were you all on Friday nights at 9? That's what we want to know. They were the ones. They were the ones that watched. They were the ones. They were the ones. Everybody came. Thank you. This is great. I love it. What a killer crowd. This is awesome. How many people slept last night? Miracle did. I was trying to sleep at like 12, and I'm getting texts and calls from her and Chris me, at like 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Did you get the photos she was sending? The photos, the video, the video. I find it. I don't even know what that is. Was anybody at the rave? Did anybody go to the rave? <laughs> Miracle was there. I was not. I was not. Okay, we got <laughs> I wanted to be. I used to rave. I had the bracelets and everything. That was pretty cute. Lots of glitter. That really doesn't surprise me, not in the slightest, honestly. <laughs> okay, so for the people who have not been to our panels before, we have two lovely people with mics, if you would like to ask our panelists some questions. Um, I actually wanted to start while we are waiting for people to line up. Um, so this is Miracle's first con with us. <gasps> So excited Thank to have you. Um, I know that in in the years that you were working on the dollhouse, you guys all had um, both. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Um, that, you guys, that you guys all had different um, different characters to play, and um, both as actives and as Ballard having his his change over the seasons. Um, how did you get? yourself into that, like those changes, I mean, with television being so fast and all. Hmm. Uh, well, that was, we were, we were chatting the other day, that was one of the challenging things is, you know, as an actor, you want to bring your best just A game, and, and if you're working on a film or, or when you have more time to prepare for a role, you can sort of inhabit the character or, or whether it's an accent or, um, and that was a real challenge was that we, we you were telling a story yesterday, Miracle, about sort of how you would prepare and that frustration. Yeah, because yeah. we were on set. We were on set, and we were doing a scene, and I think the day was almost over. You know, there would be days where we just like hung out in that apartment, and then our our off camera time was in the hallway, which was really fun for me. Um, but I was looking at we had just gotten the script for the next uh, episode that we were starting the next day, and I had like oh, it's when I spoiler alert four years later. Um, <laughs> it's when I. Um, revealed to him that I'm November and how devastating that was. But it was like a page and a half of dialogue. It was like a big massive monologue. And I was like kind of freaking out and looking. He's like, what are you doing? We're almost done. And I was like, this is for tomorrow. Leave me alone. Like, you just have to do two things at the same time. And I can't imagine for Eliza and Deitch and I'm very, you know, having to do even a couple characters an episode, how overwhelming. Well, Eliza, you're going to be speaking Russian tomorrow. Uh, we need you to memorize this, this Russian speech with a perfect accent. Right. I want to say Russian. Tomorrow. Yeah, that was like that day. They, that they said day. someone in there, for Joss is also famous sometimes for like giving you, being like, oh, we just wrote this. It's hot off the presses. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready to go. Here's five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Russian. Monologue in Russian. Yeah. You'll be amazing. It'll be great. I believe in you. You're my girl. Eliza's <laughs> <laughs> like, girl. I'm like, we're in the elevator. Can I post it on the wall? Yeah. Pull Marlon, pull Marlon Brando. Actually, I worked with an actor recently who told me that um, Harvey Keitel did that too when he worked with him. He was like his idol, and he finally did a movie with him. And he thought he was doing this deep emotional scene with Harvey, and it was just incredible. He was like, wow, I've made it. You know, I'm doing like this is my childhood idol. I'm doing a scene with him. Harvey's connecting, like he's looking right at me. It's incredible. And he realized after the first take, after he had this brilliant scene with him, that Harvey was 
reading the dialogue just to the left of them. They put the lines up behind his head. And you know now Tomo's gonna get whacked by Harvey Keitel after this panel. <laughs> probably, probably. And I love Harvey, Harvey I Keitel. So. I hope not. <laughs> Harvey, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, oh, we're gonna go I don't know, I don't think I answered that question. What was yeah. the question again? Just Do we have a hard time? No, not really, because I played Ballard. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It was it was definitely challenging. Uh, you know, Paul Paul had an interesting arc, especially at the end of the first, where I have to go to the dark side. But that was fun. <laughs> it always is. Yeah. yeah, they have cookies in the dark side. Yeah. Cookies. They have cookies and they have dolls. Juice. <laughs> I'm sitting right here. I know. That's why I said. That's why I said. And her husband is right there. <laughs> it's a, it's a, there's a lot. Okay. We have an understanding. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I love your show, as we all do. Thank you very much for coming. Um, um, you know, for all the mind-bending story and the superb acting, um, the show is also very much an action show. And I was just uh, wondering about your experience in the action sequences, and if you had any, like, experience with martial arts. Like, I feel like Agent Ballard often employed the Muay Thai clinch you know, in some of the fight scenes, yeah. so just kind of curious to speak Muay about that. I didn't even know what Muay Thai yeah, was. I, mean, I love, oh, I love action. Too. Shocker. <laughs> um, I kind of just roll into it pretty, pretty nice and easy. And uh, we had an amazing stunt coordinator, Mike Massa, on Mike the Massa. show. Awesome. I had worked with Massa. He used to double Angel, so I had beat his ass a number of times. Um, <laughs> And we had a nice shorthand from, from having worked together so much, and amazing also other doubles, and, and your doubles usually come in and they teach you firsthand like what you're doing. What was your what doubles name? The one, the, the main girl that they had all the time. Bridget was, Bridget. was one of my main Very, girls. very talented she's martial artist, awesome, man. Actually, yeah. yeah she's, she's awesome. awesome. She was great. Um, but yeah, the action was was pretty epic. And your stuff, I had heard rumors that you did your Muay Thai, and then when I saw that opening scene, I was like, Sam. Uh, yeah. Do you guys want to know a secret? Josh, uh, Josh, Josh, I've actually never done that. <laughs> she, she knows him so well. It she makes me crazy when people do that. Um, exactly, that's, that's my nickname for him. Um, Joss showed me a, a still that he took on his phone of you in the mat, like with your shirt off and the shorts and like the lighting and everything. Okay. From that opening. Get these to their own panel. <laughs> He's like, isn't that beautiful? And I was like, yes, Joss. Wow. You guys definitely have a romance. You know what's so harsh? He doesn't call, he doesn't write. <laughs> Postcard, nothing. He's cold, man. He turned into a star. He just left me in the dust. Um, oh, you know what? Josh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm never Josh. gonna let that go. <laughs> um, Eliza's obviously been doing fight scenes since you were a kid. I mean, you've been doing them forever. So she's 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 an old hand at it. Doing the the epic fight scene that we had in uh, Man on the Street was a blast. That was so much fun. It was killer. I mean, you guys saw it. Throwing, she's throwing pots at me and stuff. <laughs> you know, like a frying pan, I'm dodging pots. They had these dirty. really hard, they were actually quite heavy though, like rubber pots and pans. So you still had to be careful. Like if I took one of those to the lid, my, my already big nose would have been across my face. <laughs> and Eliza was getting into it, man. She was hucking these things at me. <laughs> that was, I mean, it was a blast. And like she said, the, uh, the, uh, the doubles we had, all very, very, very talented martial artists. Um, uh, I'm gapping out on his name now. I know his, um, his wife, Monique, Monique and Sam. Sam is amazing. He doubles uh, 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 Hugh, or not Hugh, well, I'm gapping out here, I'm retarded. Who plays Wolverine? He was the one that actually partied. Hugh <laughs> Jackman, yes, Hugh Jackman. He's been Hugh Jackman's double for all the X-Men movies. So Sam's incredible, man. He made me look badass. That one like spinning roundhouse kick, if I threw that, I'd like pull out my hip or something. That was, that was Sam. While we're making blunders, can I tell my favorite Tom Moss story? Yeah. <laughs> it was the best. It was the first.
first step, but it was the pilot and uh, Tavo came in and we were shooting in this little apartment in LA and it was like our, the first scene where where Ballard comes to Echo and, and we have this little talk and he says, the dollhouse is real. And it was like really intense and, and it was your first day, I want to say. And so we had rehearsed a number of times and we had like, we got all ready to shoot the scene and on uh, take one, sweet Tom <laughs> looks me dead in the eye with like two cameras on him and he goes, Echo, the wall house is real. <laughs> oh shit, I said wall house. I don't think, I think it took me a couple seconds to actually realize it was like a beat and she looked at me and started Maybe smiling Josh right away and then he was like, I heard Josh go, cut! <laughs> and I was like, did I say wall house? And she started cracking up. Can I, I would like to <clears throat> add to this. So my first day doing a series with Eliza Dushku and Josh Whedon. <laughs> Deal, right? Big deal. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. I'm shooting in LA finally. We're actually on location. Everything. I've done so much work. I've run that effing line in my head so many times. It's like, it's just going in circles, right? As soon as I get to set, these two are like brother and sister. They're old friends. They're telling old stories. Remember that time? Angel, Buffy, and this, and that. I'm talking like 10 years, and I'm just kind of like... <laughs> Everyone's really kind of look at me, but I'm just the guy, you know, I'm the new guy, and I, you know, I'm, I'm not really we part of it. growing out with you, Yeah, man. Come yeah on. a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Anyway, I felt a little out of place, so I said, wall house. That's <laughs> real. And Joss, I said, you gotta make me a t-shirt. He still hasn't done that. He said he was gonna. Little tidbit. Hi. Hi. Um, I think that we're all extremely disappointed that it got canceled, and like Tomo was saying, some of us just discovered it, and it's already gone. And Miracle touched on this a little yesterday, but um, are you guys comfortable with the way it got wrapped up, and do you feel like everything was delivered even though you didn't have the time to deliver it? Uh, well, I mean, I think all you guys are probably agree. It, the, it could have used at least another season. I think even three seasons. A lot of the, yeah, right. A lot of the a lot of the arcs could have been not so rushed. They could have been, you know. And like I said yesterday, you know, when because uh, I know that Joss actually, I think uh, Eliza knows probably what really happened, but I, I think he was like, okay, I've got a plan for like four more seasons. And then five seconds later, they're like, yeah, we're canceling you, you know? So he, he had a really hard time, I imagine, trying to wrap it up as best he could. And I think he, he did the best he could with what he had. And, and for me, you know, my last day working on the show um, was the scene uh, where I, I end it all <laughs> for myself. Um, and the last scene we shot in that episode was that scene in that moment with Tomo. And, and it was a very, very emotional day for me and him and Joss came by to say goodbye and we were talking and, and just kind of taking it all in and I said, so would you have, would you have killed me anyway? Like, was this, was this coming? <laughs> Did I do something wrong? You know, and he goes, babe, no way. He's like, you're one of my favorites. The fans love you. Absolutely not. He's like, but the minute I heard we were canceled, I thought, she's dead. <laughs> Classic Joss, right? She's dead, Tomo's dead. Right. Well, she's dead. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, like, for our, our relationship and our arc, I think it was kind of perfect for, for what had to happen. It was for very us. bittersweet. Yeah. But yeah, it's good. And you know what? On a positive note, oftentimes, I don't think Fox was dumb enough to do it again, but you know, the, when the plug gets pulled, it gets pulled. We were, the, I think we were on don't the eighth. Don't show up to work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we, I think it was the eighth episode or whatever when, when Joss came and sat and gave us the announcement. He said, listen guys, it's, we're, we're done, but they're gonna let us finish. Well, we so were, we're like one of, the, one of the first shows where they had just started to track DVR numbers and technology's That's always true, changing. Yeah, right. and, and so our Friday night numbers at nine o'clock weren't that ideal, but. <laughs> We, there was a little bit of hope for a minute because a lot of people were DVRing and, and yeah. we had like the highest DVR ratings of any show or something. So, I mean, yeah, it was definitely painful. It was a bummer. Um, but as you mentioned, a lot of shows you never get to finish it off. And, and they literally, I had another show called True Calling that, that happened. Um, they, but there was no ending. It was like me and Jason Priestley and then all of a sudden it was just done. 
Um, but the fact that they let us finish it off was, was very kind in some ways. And also, we were sort of surprised and thrilled when we got the second season uh, yeah, at all. Yeah, that was a shocker. Too. And was then, shocker. you know, we had to, we had to let Jones go off and do that tiny little Avengers movie. So, um, I think the last thing he said, you know, to me was like, when he was talking about how we were going to finish. And he was like, yeah, and I've got this beautiful idea. And, Tomo is going to be imprinted into you, and he can play with your boobies. And I was like, <laughs> awesome, touching. In your head. <laughs> That's funny. That's John. Do you remember, I want to ask you a question, because I don't think I've ever asked this. Do you remember meeting me when you were shooting True Calling? You were with Truco, who's a dear friend of mine. But yeah, at that time, man. I just met him. And Truco brought you to uh, the fireworks party at my yes, buddy Alex's house. Yes. That was the first time we met. Yeah, I do remember that. That was a long time ago. Yeah, he yeah. was like on the water, kind yeah. Of, right? Yeah. yeah. Good time. Good time. Remember <laughs> 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 the first time we met? <laughs> yeah. All right, next question. <laughs> Hello, thanks very much for coming. Uh, this question is for Eliza. I had a great uh, opportunity to work with Merita Halili this uh, summer doing Albanian music. And I wanted to know, uh, you talked about and blogged about your Albanian heritage, and I wanted to know if you've been exploring that Albanian music or singing or, or anything like that uh, recently. Oh, yeah. Oh, big time. Um, some of you may have known about or, or contributed to our Albanian documentary on Kickstarter. Thank you so much. We're still in the process. Um, my brother and I shot a documentary on Albania, and, and really it's about the culture and other artists, and we spent 15 days going to 15 different cities around Albania. My father's parents were born there in Korcha, so we make this amazing loop, and, and one of the sort of holdups has been, we're, we're, we're going to air it with PBS, but um, we shot all the footage, you guys helped us put it together, um, but there was a big change, the Prime Minister just stepped down and a new um, regime has come in, so we're waiting on some approval from the new government, and, uh, and then we're going to have that coming as soon as possible, but it's an amazing country, and I mean, growing up, I'd have, I grew up in a town with a lot of Armenians, and I would have my teachers, or like doctors go, I'd tell them I was from Albania, and they'd be like, oh no honey, you mean you're from Armenia. I'm like, no, Albania's a place, and it's this amazing place, and actually De Niro has recently come out of the closet as a closet Albanian. There you go. Yes, and Vare, and Vare and also. Also. this is my little Albanian cousin and yeah. his brother, so yeah, I've got bad love for my Albanian artists. That's so awesome. In the documentary, the last thing I'll say, there's a woman, you know, you get to see a lot of like Albanian pride because there's so few of us, and uh, it can get a little strange, and like, you know, this woman in the documentary says, we're not trying to say that we're the best, we're just trying to say that we exist. <laughs> and uh, it's true, you know, I, I, I have a lot of pride for it, but I think, you know, I'm excited for you guys to learn more about this beautiful place. Good People. on you. Good on you. Thanks. Awesome. Golf club, thank you. Hi. Um, I just want to say, I was one of the people at, at home Friday night watching Dollhouse, and thank you for the entertainment, Finn. Um, and my question is for Tomo. I read in an interview that you said um, the role of Ballard, it was hard for you to find the niche for it, like after coming Hard on, for me to find a... Like how to act in, like how to get into that character after a battle star. Um, I just wonder like what finally clicked and how did you get into that character? Um, I can't speak for all actors, but I think with any series, when you're an episodic, as much as you make strong choices, you do a backstory, maybe you, you have the luxury of sitting down with the show's creators and the writers and really finding out who the character is, you're still, there's still going to be a, a journey where you truly discover them and drop in. And I think if you really observe even really good actors' performances in excellent TV shows, you watch them, the progression of it from the pilot and throughout the show, I, I mean, I, I, I tend to see it, and it's been my own experience. Like, for instance, when I did Hilo and Battlestar Galactica, I had a really good sense of it. Thank you. Thank you. I had a really good sense of it in the, in the miniseries. But, you know, even more so, once the writing started getting better in first season, they actually started writing for me. It wasn't so much a C storyline. And then I, I just truly understood it, and it was kind of instinctual. Ballard, 
it was a little confusing at first. It was difficult because I wasn't sure the direction they were taking me in. And I think, to be honest with you, I think the writers were a little confused too at first because, as most of you know, we shot this amazing pilot and then they cannibalized that pilot and spread it out over f the first four episodes, which was really hard for all of us because originally, in the original pilot, her, her and I, char our characters meet right away. And then suddenly we're not meeting, and I'm trying to decide, have I met this person, or I haven't met this person, have I done this, what point am I at in my career? It was just, it was a little confusing trying to, uh, you know, keep a timetable of exactly what has happened and what's transpired. I personally found it very difficult in the first, you know, first three, four episodes. Um, I just didn't feel that I was clicking with it, and I wasn't sure if the choices I was making were um, the right ones, or I was heading in the right direction, because unfortunately, Joss and most of the producers, the writers on the show, were so stressed out about whether we were even going to make it because it wasn't looking good. When you have a pilot and then it gets cannibalized and spread out over four episodes, that's not a good thing. You're not starting out right. So there was there was definitely a, a stress on set as far as I was concerned that I felt was coming down from the top top of the ladder all the way down. So there was no Josh time. Was like a crackhead by the end of the shoot. He, a sweet crackhead. Yeah, but. honestly, he really did. I mean, when, you know, I, I looked at Josh. I didn't know him really well, not like Eliza, but I could tell. You know, he had a lot on his mind, and I think because he was like, you know, he he had, like he has this brilliant mind. He. Had, thought out this Bible of exactly the direction the show was going to go, I'm sure the episode order, how each of the episodes was going to be done, and unfortunately it was being taken in a different way right away. There was too many cooks in the kitchen, and that's going to be hard for a man like that, because you can't mess with his, his style of writing. It doesn't work. And uh, there was that stress on set. So for a while there, I, was, I, I just wasn't having my little ego, my actor ego strokes and being told you're doing a very good job, <laughs> which I need to hear. So a lot of the time I was like, I'm not sure if I'm doing a terrible job. Maybe, oh my God, are they gonna fire me? Like, am I doing the right thing? And it was harder too because I literally, the transition from Battlestar was immediate. They released me from Battlestar shooting the very last season to do the Dollhouse pilot, and then I went straight into it. So I went from this environment of working six years with all these directors and these actors, we were this big, happy family, and there was a whole lot of ego stroking going on all the time. You can be seen and directed like, that's amazing. That was so good. I'm like, thank you. Thank you, Michael. I'm like, do you mind if I go again? I just want to try something. He's like, let's do it. Let's play. And that was it. You know what I mean? So I came, I left that, and then went into, we'd finish the scene, Josh would be like, moving on. And I'm like, do you do like me? Yeah. Do you like me? Was I good? Can you please just rewind one and say that, that word? Say Joss's favorite word, please, the way only you say it. Which one? It starts with an E. It's supposed to have an X, but you just take a Z. So it's they, exactly the way you said it. So I tend to say, I, at least I used to, and because of Eliza and Joss busting my balls about it, there was I a say sign on the exactly. walls in the writers' room that said, "Do not write word, the word exactly for Tabo." Exactly. Yeah, because I'll because I'll drop the X. That's true. You'd be like exactly, exactly, exactly. Shut up. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Moving on. Did that answer your question? Exactly. You can do it. Exactly. Yeah. I've been working on it. I've been working on it. Hi. Um, you guys have obviously inspired a lot of passion and a lot of people here as evidenced by this full ballroom and we've waited an hour plus to see you. And I'm Thank curious. You. Who here are you excited to meet, and what kind of panel would you wait in line for? <laughs> um, so my signing table is right across some people from Fringe. Uh, Astrid, the one guy, huh? <laughs> with names, but I'm just, and then Michael Cervantes is this, who uh, was also a big Broadway performer, I'm sure as most of you know, he's like crazy talented. Um, so if no one's at my table for a minute, I just kind of look back and awkwardly stare, <laughs> and then I think about getting the nerve to go over, and I don't. And then yesterday I was saying hi to this guy, because he just got here, and then I was walking around, and the guy that plays Monroe on Grimm, which I'm like secretly obsessed with, by the way. It's horrible and awesome at the same time.
same exact time and I can't get enough. I'd wait in line for that panel if they were all there for sure. So I went and I introduced myself and he's like, hey, it's just not worth it. I make, I, get, I just panic. I panic a lot. So I don't know. I just, I kind of creep. I creep on people. That's what I do. Let's be honest, there's a whole level of creepiness that goes on at Dragon Con. <laughs> It's a, hey, it's okay, we're all allowed to creep. Everyone's creeping here. This, this, it's all about the people watching and, and, and creeping. I mean, as actors, we do it. I tend to do it, too. Listen, yeah. you've creeped by my table at least five times. I've creeped by the table. <laughs> so I can't help it. You know what? I, I, I'm going to admit that I haven't had an opportunity to sort of walk the, the, the what's it called? The walk of fame? Yeah. Walk of fame. Yeah, to see everyone who's there. But I noticed some of the True Blood people beside me, and I, I would love to meet them. And... Um, yeah, I'm going to make a point of it after this. <laughs> I'll get back to you. So, I fangirled down on Herschel this morning. <laughs> Walking Dead. Uh, I, we love that show, man. And it, I had a moment. Is he here? He's, oh, he's here. <laughs> he walked by yesterday to say hi to Ed Astor, who's sitting next to me. That's pretty cool. And, uh... I like, I just, I was lost. I just, I hallucinated and I forgot my name and I just was like, and then he went by and then today, he came and I had like slept eight hours and I was like, I can do this, you can do this girl. And so I was like, Herschel, we love you. He looked a little frightened. Um, and then I was like, oh yeah. Start talking, and then he's like, I'm a fan of yours too, and it was really sweet. So, I like that. That's awesome. Dead. I love when you guys turn out to be one of us. There's <laughs> <laughs> no mystery. I met Martin McDonough once, and I was terrified. The exact same thing. I went up, I was like, hey, <laughs> I love you. And then I was just so. Exactly. And he was exactly. literally just looking at me like, this clown. <laughs> and I walked away with my head down. <laughs> Can I tell, oh, poor Tom. Well, I guess it was the first, I mean, yeah, people would call me Faith a lot, you know, yell it out in the streets, and I, I guess I just did that. I was like, Herschel! <laughs> it happens, you can't control it. Probably know better. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell a quick, really, I'll be fast about it story about me freaking out probably the most ever at somebody? Do you guys know who the monkeys are? Yes! <laughs> watching the reruns as a kid but not knowing that they were reruns. I didn't and then I swear to god I was gonna marry Davy Jones. Like hands down, like forget it. That little guy was mine. And uh, and, and then and then I we, we met him at an autograph signing, whatever, whatever, and my parents bought us his autobiography. And I could read, I was like seven or eight or something, but I didn't care because there were pictures in the book and so I, I just got right to them. And he looked a little older, which was weird, because now it's the 80s. And, um, and I saw a picture of his wife and his daughter and like some pets, because I think he owned a farm. And I realized that he was married with children. And I kicked my sister out of our room and I slammed the door and I said, you guys leave me alone. And I sobbed and I said to myself out loud, a seven-year-old miracle, he didn't wait for me. <laughs> So I totally win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Sorry. laughs> you are just the most priceless human being. <laughs> Hello, this is for Tama. And my question is, where were you when Paul was in the coma? Because I watched Dollhouse first before I watched Battlestar. So I knew you as Paul before Halo. So were you filming, I might have my timing off, were you filming Battlestar when Paul was in the coma? No, no, it was just the pilot that, that, that uh, Battlestar released me for. We were almost done Battlestar. We were on the last couple episodes, and uh, they released me to shoot the original pilot of Dollhouse. So where was I when I was in a coma? Yes. Well, there was a couple scenes there. I took a nice little nap. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm behind. Like, I me. didn't get into Battlestar before. After. What did you say? I didn't find Battlestar until after Dollhouse. Thank I remember you telling me that. 
This woman, <laughs> this, this woman's a, a, a training machine. Can you show everyone your guns, please, real quick? Uh, no, seriously, she got gun show. amazing guns. Gun show. Just go! <laughs> Guns, and then I got it. <laughs> those aren't allowed. Those aren't Hi. Um, I have a question about uh, your inspiration to. Um, uh, oh. <laughs> um, deep breath, deep breath. Yes. I cried in front of you yesterday. I don't remember. Oh, I don't remember that. Taylor? Yes. <laughs> Um, obviously, Rossum is like the tangible enemy throughout the show, but what sort of internal demons did you imagine your characters battled with in order to keep pursuing the betterment of mankind? <laughs> Wait, ask I don't know. I'll get back to you. I feel like I missed, I, to make you do this again, Taylor, I feel like I missed the first, first part. Well, you just, the question. Oh, just what sort of internal demons did you imagine your character battling with throughout the show? Oh, all of us, right, because there was a lot going on, huh? <laughs> Eliza, go. <laughs> Eliza, would you like to sing this one? <laughs> Deep, and I'm in it. I'm like, I mean, there were a lot of demons. There were a lot of demons, I think, especially as, um, as Echo started to really have, feel Caroline and, and, you know, have that distinction. Um, I, I think... I mean, that was the biggest premise of the show, was we're making a show about human trafficking and, and trying to see if there is any right into so that. And I think that's why we ended up on Friday nights at 9, <laughs> when Fox realized that that's what the show was about. They were like, we can't put you on after 24 on Tuesdays. Um, but it was, I mean... I, I, could, I wish Joss was here, and he could probably give an amazing articulate Well, answer. especially because, you know, when you, when you started unraveling so much, you had so I mean, you were all about demons, you had so many characters in your head, and that must have been insane. I feel like Tomo's character had, had that issue the most because he was just conscious of it happening. Like, as the dolls, we, you know, quote-unquote volunteered, or were brought in for various reasons. I mean, you know, it's... No, 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 Paul. Oh. Paul, Paul was a happy character. He was... <laughs> He was happy with life. Life was good. He always had a smile on his face. I'm not sure if I smiled. There's a couple times I smiled. In the 26 episodes, maybe twice. Two or three times. You smiled when I brought you Manicotti. Yes, I did. I think Paul definitely had some demons. You know, interesting, you made me think of... Um, I think if the show had gone in the original direction that Joss had sort of planned, with the original pilot, there was going to be some mention of me having been recently divorced. And, uh, you know, that was kind of a choice I made, because that was one of the few things that Joss gave me in the beginning, too. I mean, it was really Ballard's, Ballard's sort of obsession with the dollhouse and, and, and Caroline, and her character was, you know, it was borderline... It was obsessive. It was, it was, it was, it was almost weird at times, and... and uh, it would have been interesting to see that explored a little bit more. Again, there, there's so much that could have been done with this show, and they, the writers were brilliant, and they, they, they didn't have the time to wrap things up. And it would have been interesting to see it go in different directions. Um, you know, I would have liked to have worked with some of the other cast a little bit more. Like, I loved when I finally got to work with Harry. We had some incredible actors on the show, obviously. Like, yeah. We were cut short. We were cut short. But I'm grateful that we did it, you know? Yeah. Um. For me, and I, I talked about this briefly yesterday, but I, I feel like, you know, when I got to be Madeline for a little bit in the second season, and, and you got, and then we hinted at it in the first season, like why I, my character volunteered to be a doll in the first place, and, and then when I got to play her for a little bit, it was, it was, it was difficult, because I had been Melly for so long, and I think we were all attached to her, and, and um, she wasn't quite, thanks. <laughs> um, Madeline wasn't quite happy, obviously, in, in her life, and I think that's, why the last line that I say before I shoot myself in the head <laughs> um, is that it's still Melly fighting through and, and she says you made me feel like a real person and I think that was so such an interesting choice because 
you know, all, all we want as people is to feel loved and respected and like people get us. And I feel like even Madeline was most happy as Melly, if that makes any sense. That's my existential thought for the day. But I think, I think you know, he loved playing with that kind of stuff. Joss was just brilliant that way. And yeah, he, did. he just, he made everybody complicated. He's really, really good at it. Because humans are. Yeah, like a, like a, yeah. I mean, Paul had this true love with, you know, for, 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 for Melly and that, and, and that, how difficult that was for him to, like, when he realized that you were a doll and having that conversation when you were Madeline. I mean, you could see it. It's, he had to let go of something in himself that he wasn't going to get back. And then, you know, when we did the, the jumps with it, the epitaphs, too, it was really interesting. I mean, that one scene that we have, you know, it's 10 years later. I mean, I'm, my character's still madly in love with this woman. He's still chasing her, but she's never quite let him in, you know? But he's not giving up. But she's, she's giving him so much, she's reciprocating so much, enough that he's there. And they're still, you know, trying to save humanity or what have you. But he's, there was that one great scene they wrote where we have the speech and I'm just like, you won't, you just won't let me in. The truck? Yeah. yeah. It was a really good scene. I like that scene. I kind of summed like, up our Tom was like going there. You're like, you know, like it's okay, buddy. It's okay. Can, can, uh, Eliza, can we do that scene again? <laughs> I've been, I've been meaning to tell you, I've actually got the lines right here, so let's do this forever. I'd like to do that scene again, because I wasn't happy with the Let go, it's okay to let go. The wall is real. Somebody make me a shirt, please. Somebody remind Joss, you talk to Joss, he doesn't talk to anyone. Tell Joss that I would like, I, will, I want my wall house shirt, I promise you. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Next Dragon Con, I want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're actors, and uh, it's your parts, but um, as actors and seeing the people that you have to portray, um, it's mainly just lines, but once you have to bring some kind of feeling to it, um, did you happen to get just the lines and then try to use whatever you've experienced to kind of bring a little bit more depth to these characters? Because I, I noticed, and I know it's not real, but uh, Paul, what you did to November really upset me. But, and I know it's not real. Paul, Paul, what did Paul do to me? Because he like cut you loose and. Oh, oh, when he threw you out. At any rate, I know it's not real, obviously. <laughs> I'm just saying that by that, I don't think any other characters that were actually doing that scene would have made it as good as it did. What I'm saying is that as y'all as actors, what do you bring into it to make it a little bit more real? <clears throat> Well, no, I think it's a good question. I th and I think, um, I mean, there are a couple, there are a lot of schools of, of practice that do different things. Every actor brings, you know, there's, your, there's Stella Adler, there's, there's all different kinds of processes. Processes? <laughs> Every actor has their process. Um, and <laughs> my mom's a professor, she's gonna cut me if she hears me. <laughs> No, I, for me, I, I feel like it's a combination. I mean, there, there's the old, like, you know, it's it's called acting, and you just try to, who was it, Anthony Hopkins, when they asked him, like, how did you become that, you know, Hannibal Lecter in, in Silence of the Lambs? I mean, did you, you know, how method did you get, or how did you be so crazy? And he was like, I thought about what a crazy person would act like, and I did that. <laughs> <laughs> or he said it cooler, I don't know. But, um, and then there's, I mean, for me, I just try to, I just, there, I go through a lot of subtext. I look at things that are in my own life. I work with a coach that oftentimes, like, when, when we sit down to work on a scene, she'll ask me, like, okay, what's going on right now with your mom? What's going on? And she'll, she'll kind of help me rifle through, like, what is most charged in me that I can sort of apply and, and try to get that scene, you know, to have that real emotion and, that, and those sparks and that kind of, um, connection and so with an ongoing show and with these guys I feel like then we get to get 
get to know each other, and it just, it's, it's a beautiful organic process, but certainly one that, that you work at and you're constantly infusing and trying to like, just get in there all dirty every day. Yeah, it's great. I mean, that's why we do it. We love to play, right? Acting is awesome, man. It's, it's, the, it's, it's, a, it's a dance, you know? It's a dance and it's, a, it's, a, it's a give and take. And that's the beauty of it. Oftentimes you might, you might make some strong choices or, or envision a scene a certain way and then you go in and do it with an actor and they're, they give you something totally different. You gotta go with it. And that's the beauty of it. And that's life, you know what I mean? It's listening, yeah. it's reacting. Um, like Eliza said, probably the most common acting technique that people use is substitution. You just take something from your life. You know, if you've had loss, which we've all had, um, and you can connect to it and you, for whatever reason you're not in the scene, um, then you do it. I find, I find, um, oftentimes with really good writing, it's, you know, it's there for you. You'll right. connect without even having to make a substitution or a choice, because it's there. It's, it's really about what, what's the scene about? What's happening right now? Is it about loss? Is it a, is it a, is it a goodbye? Is it a hello? Is it a first? Or it's a, a last? Something like that, you know? But like most actors, I, I think, you know, it's not, I don't know if there's, it's, you know, back in the 70s, there's like Meisner technique and true method studio style, you know, like method actors. I think most actors these days kind of, it's an amalgamation of everything. You use many different techniques and whatever works for you. And sometimes things aren't working for you and you're like, shit, I can try something else. You know what I mean? You scramble a little bit. But they call it the actor's toolbox. You've kind of like collected yes. everything that you've learned over the years and, you know, if you went to school for it or just whatever, you know, you kind of, you know what works and what doesn't after just trial and error. Um, you know, and like, like Tomo said, if it's good writing, you just be in character and go on their journey and it kind of just happens, you know, if you're lucky to be in that situation. And I, um, you know, Melly cried a lot. <laughs> and when you're shooting something, it's not just like one take and you move on. You could spend hours doing a scene over and over again. And I remember um, the episode where everybody was high for some reason. And, um, and I, I was just sobbing uh, in the chair in my pajamas and I had the weird wires in my head. And, and I, they just want to be like screaming and crying. And, and, um, and I actually got nervous thinking I wouldn't be able to just cry all day, you know? And I created um, a Melly mix on my iPod. And it was all like sappy heartbreak songs that really, because music speaks to me so much and I get affected immediately. It either makes me really happy or kind of geared up or depressed or whatever. So I just put a bunch of songs that put me in the right headspace of just the agony that she was in so often over this guy. <laughs> and, um, and I would be in the corner, you know, before a take and I would just have my iPod in and just let myself, you know, kind of float away so I could just get there easily and, and quicker so we could get the stuff done. But, um, Music really helps. It that's really, one of those really ones helps. You, you forget about it sometimes and you, that's one of those techniques where I'd be like, oh shit, and then you listen to a song that really affects you that, you know, and it'll bring you back, man. Like, uh, Ever James Almost, who's one of my mentors and an amazing actor. I've right? been in the business, you know, forever, 50 years ago. And, and he always says, you know, he's like, find the character's music, man. Just find its music. Find its music. That's all you need to do. Find the character's music. Hi. Um, such a complex show, and I can't think of another show where 80% of the cast is probably paying at least one or two or more characters, sometimes do dozens. And um, I, I was wondering. Doll so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be a doll. You got your wish. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. I was wondering if you had a favorite imprint. It doesn't have to be your own. Like it could be someone else's. But if any of you guys had a, you know, a favorite imprint. I love Enver dancing in that club. That is amazing. I was crying on set. Tim Minear was telling me to shut up. He got mad at me. He's like, oh, seriously, shh. I was sobbing and crying. It was, he was brilliant. God, he was so good. Oh. It was hard to do that scene with him, man. It was hard to come out and be mad and like, go save him from those, you know, guy, the guys he was fighting. I was crying. That's how hard it was. And Vera's Topher was bananas. He really is, man. He's he the is the best. A true, true talent, yeah. that guy. Oof. You mean personally, or uh, that's just like that? Okay. Yeah. 
But what was your favorite? I, I, that was one of my favorite, watching Embarrass. I loved I you as Kiki. I, that was <laughs> awesome. Oh, he was Kiki, it was, was Kiki. great at the was, beginning. Yeah, she was, was cute. Lovely at the <laughs> what was the what was the uh, the episode where you're the, the blind girl in the cult? Oh yeah. Who knows? True believer. True believer. Oh, I know. Oh, that was great work. That was <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, I, I was, really love yeah, I, you reminded me. I loved that episode. Yeah, you did amazing work on that. I really liked that episode. Obama was elected when we were shooting that episode. <laughs> love him or hate him, we were like out in that weird That's community, right. out in that commune, and I remember we were like all dressed up, sort of like Amish-like, and we were like yeah. sitting around this old TV box, like watching Obama get elected. It was like 2007 yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, if I, if I had a choice and I could imprint anything, it'd probably like be uh, musical skills, like mad musical skills, like Mozart skills. <laughs> I'm fascinated by musicians and writing music. I just blows my mind that somebody can do that because I can. I'd take, I'd take languages. I would just get them all. Just, oh, that's, that's just awesome. That's good. And talk to everybody. That's good. <laughs> that is good. Mine was silly. When I got asked that question on Friday, I said I want to be imprinted as Derek Jeter. <laughs> Just to feel how amazing it would be. Derek Jeter! I'm sorry, I know we're in Atlanta, I apologize. Um, because he's just um, an amazing athlete and a nice guy and kind of attractive and on top of the world and I don't know, I think it'd be fun. And just like make a clutch play, because I'm not an athlete at all, I'm a super huge klutz. Like, I was put on the basketball team in junior high, and I warmed the bench. I think they only put me on because I was tall. Yeah. I'm not sad about it. I just walked out crying. <laughs> Hello, guys. Um, big fan. Um, after filming and then viewing Dollhouse, were you guys still shocked and sad and mad to see how it turned? And what were your most jaw-dropping moments? Say it again. I'm sorry. What were your most jaw-dropping moments of Dollhouse? Working on it or like watching it as a... Watching it after you filmed it, kind of knowing where it went, but were you still shocked to see like it on TV? I remember seeing um, Epitaph 1 at Comic Con, I think, and I was backstage and I was crying. It was a little embarrassing because I'm like, should I be crying in my own show? But... <laughs> Stopping, and then I, I think Joss was there. I was like, I love you, man. I love you. <laughs> and it was, it, it does, it is surreal to, because you're there and you're, you kind of feel like you get the scene, and then when you see it and the music that's laid in, and everyone, and they've picked the, the finest, you know, performances from each person, it's, it's, it always, I watched an episode of my own show on a, a cross-country plane recently over someone's shoulder and I was kind of like, damn, that show was good, man! <laughs> what happened? <laughs> so you have those surreal times when you're, you're doing it and then you, can, you appreciate seeing everybody's work and accumulation right. um, in, those magic, in those magic hours. I, rem I remember um, Eliza and I were actually with uh, some of the writers and actors watching, um, was it Epitaph 2? We were with, and then, uh, is that the one that you get shot in? Was that yeah. Okay. So I either forgot that happened, I don't know what the hell was going on, but I was like completely shocked. And I, and I lost it. We were in a room full of people, so it was super embarrassing. But it was just, when I really lost it was the scene when um, Eliza uh, breaks down. And I think it was like, for her, the, you know, the realization of everything that happened, what a huge loss that was, and it was just so special to watch that scene and, and, and be there with, with her, and I remember we like grabbed hands and she goes, we loved him, didn't we? <laughs> I was like, yeah, we did, it's depressing as hell. <laughs> but it, I just, she was, she was so amazing in that scene, and I, it just, it broke my heart, and I thought it was, it was stellar, and it was like the perfect, you know, ending for that, for that relationship. Girl. Right? I just I hugged her fist. <laughs> and I said, hey, 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 I'm gonna cry. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know when, um, when when uh, Harry 
his character was revealed. Jaw dropper. When I read that, I was like, what? <laughs> oh my god, that's so awesome. It was brilliant. I had no idea. I didn't even occur to me. Didn't I? No idea. When I found that out, I thought that was so awesome. And Harry was pretty stoked too. But he's such a cool cat. He's such a cool cat. He, he tried not to make a big, you know, he was like, yeah, he just acted like it was no big deal. But I could see this little twinkle in his eye. He was, he was, he was happy. He was like, yes, finally. Because Harry, again, great, great actor, veteran, amazing actor. But you know, he he, he could have been used more. That would have happened if the show went on longer, but you know, he wasn't, I think for Harry, he wasn't used as much as he would have liked, so there was some validation there, you know, that happening in the end, and him turning out to be that character was pretty cool, I think, for him. Yeah. And yeah. can we just give a shout out to Olivia Williams? She is such an amazing She's actress. She's a goddess! Oh my god. That bitch Loves. was mad. She was like, working with her, man. I loved it. And that was also one of my favorite episodes was Haunted, when I played Margaret and we were sort of peers and I was terrified because I was yeah. like, it was really intimidating. Yeah, so sort of like be in the zone with her on that level and, yeah. and she's no joke. She has a very about regal it. presence about her. She like it's royalty. It's like, oh hi, I'm sorry, excuse me. You know, like, <laughs> well, it's that British thing, but, she's, but the thing is, British she's actually really, really approachable. Affable, yeah. like she's, oh, yeah. she's just and sassy, and she's like really fun and funny, actually, yeah, yeah. and bright and amazing and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> she would like come in every day and be like, I just did my Bikram yoga. Yeah. I'm like, oh, oh, god, I know, she was on it. Yeah. yeah, at 4 a.m., she did it for an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Froggies, if you're doing group oh, photos with us. Okay. Yeah, I'm froggies be... photos. I've got a flight like right after, so yeah. I'm running out of Dragon Con. But I'm going to be 15 minutes late because I have to run to my room. <laughs> what? I have to. It's a must. Okay. I'm sorry. Last question. <laughs> Don't make that the last question. Um, but yeah, come see us. We'd love to take yeah. a cool shot. Last question. So. Joss sort of has, there's, there's this formula to all of his stuff that I think is sort of what his fans like. There's, you know, the characters that always seem to have lots and lots of endlessly witty things to say all the time. And, you know, there are these sort of unbelievable situations with, you know, demons and vampires and spaceships. But Dollhouse really pushed the boundaries in almost every way. It wasn't comic and funny all of the time. And it was actually an incredibly believable premise. So, and, you know, Dollhouse to me at least stands out completely from all of his other shows. When you were filming this, all of, me, all of you, but especially Eliza having worked on, on Buffy and Angel, were you sort of aware of the fact that while you were working with Josh, you were sort of creating something that he had never created before? Um, yeah, I mean, I think so. And, and uh, I mean, it, it's been obviously an honor to work with that guy three times. Most people would hope to have the chance only once, and and I thought it was really brave of him, and I thought it was really, um, you know, courageous, and it was. I, I just I feel bad in a sense badly that he didn't sort of get the love from the and the creative freedom to do it the way he would have wanted to do it. But I think in the end, he definitely had that had our little sit down, and we were like we did some stuff that we're really proud of and that was what was most important and uh, to me and to him and, and hopefully to you guys and uh, so you know it is what it is and, and we were we were pretty stoked. You guys I think we're all pretty much done but I'm gonna run out of here now so that I'm not late for the photos. You guys are amazing this is such an incredible turnout thank you so much for all the love. Guys, gave this weekend so many kind things were said. Really, really appreciate it. Very touching.